Shane O'Grady is my name. I'm a senior lecturer here in independent colleges and I'm also the tutor for the HPAT courses that we run in Independent Academy. Um, so you all should have a copy of the handout when you uh, came in um, earlier this afternoon. So we're going to turn to that now. We're going to spend about 45 minutes going through uh, some of the critical uh, issues you need to be aware of in relation to the HPAT and then we're going to spend the remainder of the time uh, going through some questions and exploring some of the techniques that can help you maximise your score. Okay, so if you turn to your handout, um, a couple of the things you need to be aware of in terms of the HPAT, um, not all of the details are fully available yet. We've been told, for example, that registrations open in early November, but we haven't been given a specific date. Um, the fee has changed. Some of you may be aware of this. The fee now is increased from 95 euros to 115. But the good news about that is that your practice material from Acer comes as part of that fee. So previously you used to have to buy the two practice booklets uh, separately. You don't have to do that anymore. And the test date has been put back a week. Um, it used to be the last Saturday in February. It's now the last Saturday in March. Um, and again, the registrations we have been told will close on the 20th of January. Now, in another positive development, they used to have this system whereby if you registered early, it was a certain fee, and if you registered in the last week, it was almost double, and if you registered in the last three days, it was treble. Uh, they seem to have done away with that. It's just one um, a date, and once you register on time, it's €115, Euros, and the practice booklets are included um, with that. Okay, uh, one important thing for you to watch out for is it still is in your interest to register early to make sure that you can actually do the test in your favoured centre um, because if you know Acer are booking rooms on the basis of who have registered to date and if there's a very small number of people have registered particularly in more of the regional centres uh, they may not book a big enough centre. Now you won't be prevented from doing the exam it just may be that you mightn't be able to do it in your preferred location so you don't want to get involved in a lot of travelling or having maybe to spend an, uh, an overnight accommodation uh, in a, in a centre uh, because you've left it a bit late. So register as soon as the registration is open is my advice. Okay, in terms of um, the results, this is also something that's changed and we think this is a very positive development. There was a lot of concern about this last year. You may be aware of the fact um, that the results last year came out on the 30th of April and it proved very disruptive for particularly um, people that were still doing their leaving cert. Not so much for students that were already in college. I'm sure you're aware of the fact that as a result of the HPAT, an awful lot of people who were in first year in college do the HPAT the second time around and then they switch to medicine. But having said that, the majority of students still doing the HPAT are doing the Leaving Cert and getting the HPAT result on the 30th of April, maybe slap bang in the middle of your mock exams, is not necessarily the most helpful uh, thing that could happen. Uh, so they've put it back again. Uh, so it's gone back to the 27th of June, although mature students who have already done their Leaving Cert and are not using that as part of their score in this uh, sitting, they're going to get them earlier on um, in the year. So that's probably a very positive development. I know people would like to get the results straight away, but certainly, you know, timing it for it to come out before you've even maybe finished your mocks um, or maybe just shortly after your mocks is not very helpful. So I think this is a, a positive development. Okay, <clears throat> so the three parts of the HPAT, again, you have to, you know, make sure that you don't... Um, uh, dismiss this because even though the majority of students that are doing the HPAT because of the nature of the qualification they're pursuing are very much high achievers, um, you haven't been really tested this way particularly in school. Uh, in fact an awful lot of subjects in the Leaving Cert you'll be aware of this, now I'm not going to mention them by name in case I upset somebody, but there are certain subjects that are seen as soft honours and there are certain subjects where let's be honest about it, you know maybe the most important skill is rote learning. Uh, if you had a photographic memory, you perhaps would perform very well in that particular uh, subject. Uh, what the HPAT tests you in, you certainly aren't tested this, in this explicitly in the Leaving Cert, uh, but there are some subjects where definitely it's tested. So it is something that people have to consider, is that it's not a test or a way that you've been tested before for most people. So you have logical reasoning and problem solving. Having said that, you'd have to admit mathematics skills um, the actual skills behind mathematics would help people an awful lot with that. Uh, then we have one which is probably the most difficult one, um, admittedly, for tutors to tutor. And that's section two, which is interpersonal understanding. Um, a recent report on the HPAT um, showed that the vast majority of students who repeat the HPAT do significantly better. 
Uh, 85% in fact of people who repeat it uh, do better. And of those, uh, a very significant amount uh, increased their score by 40. Now, one of the areas that they increased their score quite significantly in is in Section 2. The report doesn't go into any causation behind that, but you'd have to say that being a year older, or particularly having spent maybe a year in university, you would be a little bit more emotionally intelligent. Um, and this is really what Section 2 uh, addresses. Uh, so it's, you know, admittedly, uh, anybody who tells you otherwise isn't being totally honest, it is a challenging uh, section uh, for uh, people to tutor or to practice. Okay, the third stage then is nonverbal reasoning. These are the, the shapes, okay? And in the recent review, this is the area where students did improve their score the most. Uh, people who repeated um, improved their score uh, by a very, very significant factor with nonverbal reasoning. Personally, it's my favorite area to tutor. It's just the, the type of the test that I actually like uh, the most. And as a part of that review, there has been a proposal. Now, it's still a proposal, and we, we're, we're just not sh sure um, to actually have the marks that you get for Section 3 uh, as a result of the fact of people repeating Section or repeating the HPAT and doing so well in Section 3 in contrast to the other time around. They're talking about the fact that whatever score you get in Section 3 would be actually halved. Okay, uh, in order to kind of, I suppose, um, reduce that advantage that repeat students are, are getting. Now, at this stage, it is still just a proposal. There were only three proposals in the report. That was one of them. Uh, and again, all information that we can get from ACER that's available on their website indicates that the proposal hasn't been agreed yet. Now, having said that, the exam is still quite significant uh, time away, so they may decide to do it. I, I think it's a slight moot point anyway, because if a student is tied... Um, on sections one and section two with another student, it will come down to section three, whether you have it or not. Um, so again, we'll have to wait and see. But just to be clear about that, it is a proposal in the review report, but it hasn't actually been implemented or we've no knowledge that it is going to be implemented yet. Okay? All right, so that's the idea behind the three different sections. And again, one of the things that is very, very important in the HPAD is your ability to answer the questions under time pressure. I suppose what they're trying to demonstrate here or what they're trying to prove here in, in order to advise on people who might be well suited to, to pursue undergraduate medicine is your speed of decision making. Um, I would suggest to you that every person who is doing the HPAT, typically if there's somebody with reasonable expectations of getting to medicine, they would be able to answer every single question in the HPAT successfully. But the challenge is to do it within the time budget you have. Um, and that's why I think that practice is something that is very, very important. Now, the way you might do that practice is up to you, but this notion that you can't prepare or practice for the HPAT is a load of nonsense as far as I'm concerned. Um, and even, you know, Acer themselves um, produce two practice booklets, you know, for an exam that they sometimes say on their road shows you can't practice for. Well, then why do you sell practice booklets for something that you say you can't practice for? Seems a little bit contradictory, and that's probably been quite generous. So that's the idea behind it. You have 65 minutes for the 44 questions in section one. It's about 85 seconds per question. The interpersonal understanding, you have 36 questions in 45 minutes, so you have the least amount of time in it, uh, 75 seconds per question. And then the non-verbal reasoning, you have 30 questions in 40 minutes. Now, <clears throat> another piece of misinformation that gets circulated out there, which is very dangerous, um, and you can understand it in one way because it's what people are conditioned to do, particularly in the Leaving Cert and even in college exams, um, is to move your time around. So let's say if you're doing Section 1 and it isn't going particularly well for you and you've given your best account of yourself and after 55 minutes you say, listen, I can't squeeze any more correct answers out of this section. So you say, look, you know what I'll do? I'll start Section 2 early. Okay, so 55 minutes into the 65 minutes for Section 1, I'll start Section 2 early. If you're caught doing that, you'll be expelled from the exam. And the way that they do it, you may have noticed this in practice booklet too, it's very, very simple. Uh, I do it in a more even obvious way if it was me. I would just basically have different color pages. You're given one booklet, but you'll notice on practice booklet two, there's a small symbol in the top right-hand corner of the pages in section one, a slightly different symbol. I think it's a circle, a square, and a cross. A different symbol on the top right-hand corner of the pages in section two and a different symbol again on the top right-hand corner on the pages in section three. 
So you have to stick within the time budget for each section. They're not going to hand out three separate booklets. It's one booklet, but you have to stay within those. And that's something that's actually counterintuitive because we're conditioned in school and college to basically say, look, if you can't you know, squeeze any more blood out of that stone in section A or the first section and you've got 10 minutes left, there's no point in sitting there just staring at the questions, start section two early. You can't do it. You have to operate within the time constraints that are there. And you know, that's to be fair to everybody. So everybody has been assessed in contrast to everybody else fairly. So very, very important. I've seen some very dangerous advice about that on various bulletin boards and whatever. Maybe it's well-intentioned. I don't know if it's well-intentioned or not. You know, maybe it's actually quite mischievous, but it certainly is not good advice. You have to stick within the time budget. Take a look at practice booklet number two and you'll see the symbol. And I'd be able to see the symbol you know, from this distance. So an invigilator walking up and down an exam hall will be very e easily able to see uh, that you're on the section that you're supposed to be on. It is not worth the risk. Yes, this lady here. I don't, I don't know. The question that this lady has asked here is, that would they stop you in between? My understanding is they make an announcement. They basically say, OK, you are now finished section one. You must now commence section two. You are now finished section three. You must now, sorry, section two. You must now commence, com, um, uh, commence section three. So there's, there's just an announcement, that's it. But I don't think there's any more pause in that. It's the one answer sheet. Uh, so there's nothing else to be handed out at the beginning other than that. OK, so just an important thing to watch out for. OK, so the exam structure, this was the thing that was proposed. And we don't know if this is going to be implemented or not. Uh, again, so it's purely speculation at this stage. Having said that, there's another document that the five admitting colleges typically do produce at this stage, and they haven't yet. Uh, so we're going to wait for the information in relation to that. I'll show you that document in a second. Typically, they produce that by you know, early September, um, and it hasn't been produced yet. So my understanding is that the, the deans of the five admitting um, uh, colleges are actually considering the three proposals in um, the interim report on the HPAT, and once they have decided on what they're going to do, that information will be communicated uh, to all of the candidates attempting the HPAT. Uh, that's going to be the only significant difference. The other one is talking about the fact that uh, you will have to repeat the HPAT. Um, you can't hold your score for two years, and that you'll actually have to sit at a second one. That's the other major one. The third one is quite a minor uh, proposal, which is that ACER provide more practice material for, for students. Again, suggesting that this myth about you can't practice or prepare for the HPAT seems a little bit ridiculous, seeing as one of the recommendations was provide more practice material.